Good day, philosophy class. Welcome to your third lesson on your philosophy subject. This is going to be lesson three, Methods of Philosophizing. Let's correct that. Our lesson objectives for today is that at the end of this lesson, the students should be able to distinguish a difference between truth and opinion, analyze situations that show the difference between opinion and truth, and then evaluate opinion. Lastly, is to realize that the methods of philosophizing lead to wisdom and truth. Now, to open up the discussion, we have on your module the challenge of the day. Andyan po yan. No? Meron sa inyong i-offer na dalawang pin. Yung red and blue. So, halimbawa, yung red pill, if ever you're going to take it, will allow you to go back in time. Tapos, yung blue pill naman, Okay, will allow you to go and see your future for yourself. So, kung papipiliin ka, ano ang mas gusto mo? Yung bumalik sa past o makita ang hinaharap? Which bill are you going to choose? Kaya po natin ginamit ang challenge of the day na ito is for us to learn that in life, our existence as a human person is filled with many choices. Okay? And we're going to be confronted with a lot of decision-making in our lives, as I told you at the opening of our course. So maraming no, decision ang gagawin natin, maraming mga hakbang sa buhay ang ating gagampanan no, sa ating patuloy. Okay? Patuloy na struggle, pakikibaka sa mundong ibabaw. Now, there is a, a task there, an activity. Okay? Um, it's a passage coming from Rick Warren's Purpose Driven Life. Okay? So, allow me to read it for you guys. Yan sa module nyo, nandyan din yan. Eh? Okay? This is taken from the book, The Purpose Driven Life in 2002. Where is the glory of God? Look around. Everything created by God reflects His glory in His surroundings. We see it everywhere. From the smallest microscopic form of life to the vast Milky Way. From sunsets to sunrise to storms and seasons. Creation reveals our Creator's glory. In nature, we learn that God is powerful, that He enjoys variety, loves beauty, is organized, and is wise and creative. Okay? So after reading this task, excuse me, you will be confronted with two questions. Okay? You can answer this later on sa inyong Moodle, Moodle, uh, Moodle account which I have prepared for you. These two questions are, the first one, are the above statements yung binasa nyo na yan, galing kay Rick Warren, are they considered factual or is it opinion? And then last is the question, what is the connection between Knowing something and being certain of it. I repeat. So, ano daw yung connection? What is the connection or the relation between knowing something and being certain of it? So, ayun yung dalawang tanong. Okay? So, the first thing is, maintindihan ninyo kung ano ang pinagkaiba okay, ng fact sa opinion. And from what is being uncertain to certain. 
Pag sinabi bang certain, ano ang ibig sabihin nun? Okay. Certain means, tama, sure. Sure o sigurado ka sa sinasabi mo, sa iniisip mo. Whereas, uncertain is kabalik na rin. Yung hindi ka sigurado, hindi ka ganapan yung kasiguraduhan mo sa isang bagay. Okay? So, moving on. Why is the talk about God relevant to the discussion of philosophy? Kasi, yan ang unang-una. Yan ang isa sa mga fundamental questions ng tao sa mundo. The question about the existence of God. So, tayo lahat ay nabubuhay, ipinanganak sa mundo na may kinaanibang pananampalataya o pananalig. Ito ay maray itinuro o itinakda dahil sa isang doktrina and so on and so forth. Pero ang tanong talaga dyan ay yung pag ng tao, if God really does exist. No? Siya ba talaga ay totoo? Siya ba talaga ay ganap? Okay? At siya ba talaga ay kasama natin na nabubuhay? Okay? So may mga ilan na naniniwala, okay, they believe, that there is a God. Some are a bit skeptic about it o hindi sila sigurado. Okay. Where some do not believe in the concept of God. Kaya dito papasok ngayon ang philosophy para bigyan ka paglilinam o bigyan you know, kabuluhan ang katanungan tungkol dyan. Dahil mahirap magpatuloy sa isang paksa o araling kung may mga bagay na hindi tayo sigurado. Kaya, Sa special metaphysics na diniscuss natin, ang theodicy or natural theology ay isa sa mga pangunahing branch o sangay ng pag-aaral ng filosofiya. So balikan natin ulit, anong ibig sabihin ng theodicy or natural theology? It is the bra that branch of special metaphysics in philosophy that justifies the goodness and existence of God amidst the presence of evil. At isa sa mga pangunahing philosopher na nagtangka, no, gamitin ang filosofiya para bigyang linaw o liwanag ang paksa tungkol dito ay walang iba kundi si St. Thomas Aquinas. Si St. Thomas Aquinas ay nabuhay noong 15th century kung saan kasama niyang nabuhay ang mga scholastics, skeptics, pagans, at maraming pang iba na nagtatanong kung sa existence ng God. At kanya isinula ang isang napaka, no, napakakilalang aklat na siyang nagbigay ng sandigan tungkol sa mas matibay na paniniwala ng tao sa isang makapangyarihang nilalang na kung tawagin ay Diyos. At yan ay ang kanyang libro na Suma Theologica na kung saan naglalaman doon ang five ways o five proofs okay, of rationalizing the existence of God. Ang Naging inspirasyon o pinagpasingan ni St. Thomas Aquinas dito ay mula sa classic philosophy na ang may akda pa nun ay si Aristotel. Malala po ninyo, si Aristotel ay nabuhay limang libong taon bago pinanganak si Kristo. Ibig sabihin, ang mga philosopher tulad niya ay hindi mga kristyano. Nabuhay silang hindi pa nila kilala si Jesus Christ. Pero meron silang religion nun. Meron silang Olympian gods. Meron silang faith. But not the Christian concept about God. Na siyang inusad naman ni St. Thomas Aquinas. Now, <clears throat> ang mga tanong na sasagutin ng libro na to o gawa ni St. Thomas ay mga basic question in theodicy. 
Number one nga ay, is there a God? And how do we prove the existence of God? What and who is God? No? What and who is God? If He exists at all. Siyempre, pag mga Chinese, meron silang Buddha. No? Ang mga Hindu, meron silang mga Brahmans. So, ang Diyos ay nasa ibang ibang pangalan. And sometimes, anyo. Pero kung talagang meron mga makapangyarihan nila, o kung may nag-iisa mga pangyarihan nila, anong klaseng God pa ang tinutukoy natin? And then, kinakailangan ba ang paniniwala? Okay, about God. Is it necessary? Okay. So, the five ways of St. Thomas explains okay, the existence of God in light of pure reason. No? Magkaiba po kasi yung theodicy sa theology. Okay, kung saan yung, yung theology kasi ang ginagamit ay faith at pananalig ng tao. At mahirap question niya. Dahil kapag nananalig ka, naniniwala ka, may ipananang palataya ka sa isang bagay, okay, mahirap questionin ang sinasabing faith. Whereas, sa theodicy kasi, hindi faith ang pinapagana, kundi ang iyong reason. No? Reason o katwiran. At si St. Thomas, bagamat siya ay doctor of the church, no? isa siyang pare, nasa taanan ng mga kaparehan, pinaliwanag niya ang philosophical rationalization about the existence of God using philosophy through the five proofs he demonstrated. At isa-isa yung po namin ngayon yan. Kung pinanood at pinakigyan ninyo, yung uh, video na uh, shared to you last time. Okay, may meron na kayong basic na idea tungkol sa pag-uusapan natin ngayong hapon na to. No? So, let's start with the first one. Okay? The first one is argument from motion. Everything that is moving is moved by another. Okay? Naniniwala tayo na lahat ng bagay sa mundo ay gumagalaw at merong nagpapagalaw. Okay? Ngayon, kung babalikan natin yung mga nagpagalaw, gala, sino nagpagalaw ng ganito, ano ang dahilan ba't gumagalaw ang tubig sa batis, okay? babalik tayo at aatras ad infinitum. Ang ibig sabihin ay never ending, walang katapusan. Hanggang umabot tayo sa sukdulan na meron isang being o nilalang na siyang may kagagawan ng lahat. No? Uh, kay Aristotle, sinabi niya na ito ay tinatawag na prime mover. Okay? Kay St. Thomas, he calls this the first mover. So, ito yung nagpapagalaw sa lahat ng bagay pero walang pwedeng magpagalaw sa kanya. At yan ay walang iba, kundi si God. The second is the argument from efficient cause. No? May mga bagay sa mundo na hindi naging sila dang walang bagay na naglilikha sa kanila. This is the law of cause and effect. That whenever there is an effect, there is always an equivalent cause. Ngayon, tulad ng first argument, mahirap bumalik sa kung sino ang naging dahilan ng ganito. Alam niyo, di ba, yung sino, ano ang nauna, itlog o ang manok. O, di ba? Isa sa mga matihilig pagtalunan. Ano ba na una? Itlog ba muna o manok? Saan ba galing ang itlog? Sa manok. Saan galing ang manok sa itlog? So, sino ang nauna? So, ano ang cause? So, we cannot go back. Okay? We cannot go back. Because if we will go ad infinitum, never ending na naman. Kaya, we agree that it is therefore necessary to admit that above all things that cause to become what they are right now, there must have been a first cause or what St. Thomas would say, the uncaused cause. And that is what we call God. 
The third argument is from possibility and necessity. Ayan. This uh, argument dictates the, the importance of distinguishing what do we mean by a possible being from a necessary being. Lahat ng bagay sa mundo is composed of matter and form. No? Lahat ay binubuo ng matter and form. As a possible being, ang magandang example niyan ay tayo, tao. Okay? Man is called a possible being because we are capable of existing and at the same time, we are also a possible being incapable of existing through death. No? So, meron tayong cycle ng birth and death. That's why we are possible beings. Plants, animals, buildings are all possible beings. Why? Because pwede silang magawa no? at pwede rin silang masira in due time. That's why it's a possible being. However, okay, merong punto sa panahon when all of the things around us did not exist. Diba? Na hindi nag-exist. So what do you mean by that? Okay, so ano ang, kaya nga babalik tayo sa uh, tanong na, Ano ang naging dahilan ng ating existence? Okay? Why the, we as man, human beings came into this world? No? So there must be a, a being that is so-called the author of all creation na siyang naging dahilan ng pagiging lahat ng mga bagay. Pero hindi siya ginawa, hindi siya naging effect ng ibang cause. Kaya nga sa number two, ang cause-cause, di po ba? Kaya sa number three, some things, okay, some things, there are some things that exist out of their own entity that do not require no, the possibility of other beings. And this is what we call a necessary being. Okay? At ang necessary being na yan, na siyang naging may dikha, na hindi naging cause ng ibang bagay, is what we call a God. Number four is argument from gradation of being. It's a question about perfection. Everything in the world is a reflection of perfection. However, despite of this reflection of perfection, hindi mo pa rin na natin masabi na ang lahat ng bagay sa mundo ay perfecto. <coughs> okay? Merong basihan. Meron tayong pinagbabasihan ng perfection. Halimbawa, pag yun na nga lang may kontis, Di ba, meron tayong criteria for judging. So, there is a criteria na inaabot to meet that certain perfection. But, above all this, okay, ang perfection ay wala sa disposal ng tao. Pagkat tayo mismo ay mga nilalang na imperfect. Hindi tayo perfecto. Therefore, there must be something in which all of this Perfection. These perfection are attributed, and that one perfect being is what we call God. At ang last argument is the argument from design. No? Every object or every body is directed towards a certain goal. Okay? And uh, a thing that lacks the proper knowledge or intelligence 
does not have the power or the capacity to reach a goal. Halimbawa, itong whiteboard market na to ay hindi makakarating sa whiteboard para maisulat ng hindi gamit ng aking kamay. Naintindihan po ba ninyo? So, ang gamit niya ay panula, pero kapag walang kamay na hawak para maisulat, hindi siya gagalaw. Mananatili siya na ito. So, ang ibig sabihin is, unless something is directed, something is guided towards reaching a goal, okay, that thing or object will not meet its end. Kaya merong invisible na kamay. There must be some intelligent being. There must be that intelligent being capable of guiding us, directing us towards our goal. And you know who that being is? Ang sabi ni St. Thomas, it's God. Ang fifth argument, ang pinatawag ng ibang scholars na teleological approach to the existence of God. Because when we say God is the designer, hindi lang siya creator, but He is the, the ultimate cause of everything. Na bago pa ang lahat ng ito sa loob at labas ng universe, the, the, the great design was already planned and purported by God. Kaya tayo sa mundong ito na nabubuhay ay ginagabayan ng isang mga pangyariyang nilalang towards the achievement of our goals. Isipin mo na lang na ang, ang God ay isang archer. Paana? Palaso. Tapos may target. Paano makakarating yung palaso, yung pana, doon sa target? Kung walang magre-release niyan. Ikaw yung palaso. Ikaw ang may goal at target sa buhay. At sino ang gagabay sa iyo para ma-reach mo ang target mo? Yeah. So, mga minamahal po, estudyante, yan ang paliwanag ni St. Thomas Aquinas patungkol sa kaugnayan ng tao sa isang makapangyarihan ng ilala. Dahil ito ay isa sa mga pinagmulan ng maraming kakanungan sa mundo about God's existence. At bakit nakasentro dito ang discussion natin? It's because, like I said, earlier this lecture, we talked about okay, the truth and opinion as a matter of human activity. Every human person is entitled to his or her own opinion. However, ang goal ng philosophy is in the search for what is true. Yan po ang goal natin. Bagamat marami tayong opinion at iba-iba ang pananaw natin sa buhay, pero sa mundo, may mga bagay na totoo no, na sandigan ng katotohanan na siya ating pinagbabasihan ng lahat ng ito. Kaya dapat alam natin ang pinagkaiba ng katotohanan sa opinion na. Kasi yung katotohanan, hindi mo na pwedeng i-challenge siya because truth is an accepted statement. It is an accepted statement because it is supported by facts and evidences. Kaya hindi pwedeng dispute ang truth. Like, the earth revolves around the sun. Di ba? The sun rises from the east, sets on the west. One plus one is two. Yan yung mga bagay na hindi mo na pwedeng questionin. Dahil yan sila ay proven as true. However, opinions, kailangan natin mag-ingat kasi... Hindi lahat ng opinion kailangan mong paniwalaan. Kaya nga opinion eh. No? Nasa sa'yo yun kung tatanggapin mo o hindi. Pero may mga kinatawag tayong mga solid opinions wherein 
they seem to be like facts or based on facts, but they are not necessarily true. Dito tayo mag-iingat. Yung tinatawag na solid opinion. Yung solid opinion sa salita natin, akala mo parang totoo. As if parang totoo. But like I said, they are not based on facts. Kaya nga maraming tayong tinatawag na mga fake news. Ayan. Kaya tulad ko na nasabi ko kanina, mag-ingat tayo sa mga akala natin totoo, na parang totoo. That's why here in school, tinutuwa namin kayo maging critical, maging analytic sa mga bagay na naririnig, nababasa o napapanood ninyo. Pagkat hindi lahat ng mga bagay-bagay na nakikita na nakikita natin ay totoo. So we have to check sources. If the sources are legit, based from facts, supported by evidences, and all. And that's the only time that we can assert them that we are really in search or after for what is true. And not just merely opinions. Kaya po, uh, mag-ingat Ulit ko ba, mag-ingat sa pagkakaiba ng dalawang doon. Sapagkat ang goal natin ay manatiling matatag. Okay? In the search for truth. There are statements of truth and statements what we call of facts. Okay? But there are also beware of statement of opinions. Statement of facts are based from real-life experience. It, has, it is supported by evidence. It is supported by references. Hindi kayo maliligaw okay, if the statement is factual. However, statement of opinions remain as an ideology okay, based on someone's personal thought, personal feelings, personal idea. Kaya nga it is what we call subjective. No? Opinions are always subjective whereas facts facts are always objective okay kaya dito tayo sa objective kasi nandun yung tunay na linaw ng lahat eh. okay so please bear in mind that these two truth and opinion are not something that we could interrelate they are different in their own but they are important elements of philosophizing. Okay? So now, Tara. moving forward, okay, as we conclude, Ayan po, no? May mga exercises akong binigay dyan para malaman ninyo yung ites kung gano'n kayo kagaling mag-determine ng truth and opinion. I hope you get them well para sa quiz mo ako kayo na mataas na score. Okay? So, pag-isipan niyo mabuti. Kasi ang mga truth and opinion sometimes rely on your stock knowledge and your previous experiences. Okay, so to end our discussion today, Always remember the difference between truth and opinion. So, review natin, ulitin ko. When we say truth, okay, truth is always accepted statement. It is accepted by the society. Whereas opinions are socially unacceptable. Remember that truth always comes from the heart and that reality follows from the heart. There are times, ang truth is suppressed. Di ba? Kasi sa buhay talaga natin, mahirap magsabi ng totoo. Minsan, pinagtatakpan natin ang sarili natin. Pero mas nakakagaan ng kalaoban, yung alam mo na doon ka lang lagi kumakating sa katotohanan. Kahit minsan masakit. <laughs> minsan nakakahiya. O, di ba? Kaya, kahit anong pagpipigil ang gawin natin, we cannot suppress the truth. Okay? We have to let it out. We have to rely on it. Okay? And that every truth 
Okay? Requires courage. Alam niyo, importante ito. Saying the truth always require courage. Ano yung ibig sabihin ng courage? Courage is tapang. O mas magandang sabihin natin yung lakas ng loob. No? Lakas ng loob. Dapat meron kang lakas ng loob na sabihin ng katotohanan and at the same time, dapat magkaroon ka din ng lakas ng loob para tanggapin yung mga bagay na totoo. Katotohanan. Crush ko siya. Crush, crush mo ang isang tao. Realidad. Hindi kanya crush. Ah. Sana. Sakit. Ah, di ba? So, hindi lagi kumakating sa reality. No? So, remember that truth is always real, but reality is not always true. Kaya po, muli, ito ang inyong philosophy teacher na nag-iiwan sa inyo na magpakatotoo sa buhay. Sapagkat yan lang ang bagay na magpapalaya sa iyo. The truth will set you free. Okay? And that ends our third lesson for our subject. So kung meron po kayong tanong, mag-iwan lamang po ng comment sa video na to. Kung meron kayong gustong paglilinaw para po mabigyan natin ng katugunan. At para po sa pagsusulit, once again, punta tayo sa Google account natin. Okay? At sundin po yung schedule ng mga pagsusulit po ninyo. Katulad ng ginawa natin kung nakaraan linggo. Okay? Salamat po. Have a nice day.